You get it? Yeah. All good. All good. So, how is everything with you? Just working. Working, man. This the uh, like the gardening season is approaching to the end around maybe December. So that means less work. So I'll definitely be spending time on the piece of land and keep cutting trees down. Cool. <laughs> I have yeah. seen some pictures that you just put some yeah. some of the trees down <laughs> with the axe. Yeah. Yeah, all by accent, so no machinery, all no machines. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Good, yeah. I mean, it's it's like there there's a thing I learned recently by my boss. It's like you have two things in life: time or money. You rarely have both at the same time, unless you're filthy rich. Then it's it's another story. But like in mm -hmm. my case, I have to choose. So choose time. Mm -hmm. Choose time. <laughs> How about All you? Right, How's it going man. over there? It's everything okay. It's just like I work as a carer, so I, I didn't stop working. I was like yeah. looking after them. So, so far, so good. At the moment, I'm not working too much, just like a part time. So now I'm going to start to do some gardening course, stuff like that, you know, to start oh, to sweet. go to the, the path that I want, you know. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. It's you slowly seem excited it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have some questions for you, man. I read yeah, down go here. Ahead. Go. And I remember when we met and we were in the Curgentila, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I remember you said loads, loads of stuff when you started, but if you can uh, tell this again for this interview, how was for you your life before permaculture? You know, who are you? Oh, well, <laughs> I'm Alexi. <laughs> I'm from Canada and I live in Finland. Uh, no, man, before permaculture, I was this uh, kind of like work addict at the bakery. I was doing crazy amount of hours and shift and living the kind of like the life in the city being much like a social media maybe even computer games person mm -hmm. and then when permaculture came into my life kind of like at the same time that i was myself changing going to a more natural way of living um i think that was about three years ago and the oh. shift has been fast like the shift has been super fast and difficult but um, I think for, for me also, like, I mean, the, the question was like how I was before. So yeah, but how I was, because not if I start, I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah. So I was like this kind of usual city person stuck in this wheel that was mm -hmm. not going anywhere. So, yeah. Right. But how was your family, like your background? Did you have any contact with the nature before? How was how was it? Well, I when I lived back in Montreal, I was uh, living in uh, one of the underdeveloped areas, which was right. more like forested. So as a kid, I was playing a lot in the forest with my with my neighbors. So I had a bit of that, but let's just say I was I didn't go into the scouts. I didn't do much camping. So it was more like okay, living in the city, having a forest. And at some point there was no possibility to be in that forest as well because it got cut down for more houses. Mm -hmm. And I mean, at this point, uh, moving to Finland afterwards, okay, that's cool here because you know, there was much more parks, there's much more green. So I guess I was able to go out and, you know, gather berries still, even if I was not into permaculture, I was going outside so yeah so you you had like a little bit of connection with yeah, yeah i know not so, not so much just a bit just like yeah. enough to have made me interested as a kid and maybe that's what it helped me to transition mm. at some point now yeah yeah talk about transition man i think i have been talking with loads of people about that that because i feel like I, i'm in the transition as well i still live in city and I'm, I can't wait to go to the uh, rural area, you know, to 
have my own site to do the mm -hmm. everything that I want, you know. And I want yeah. you, I want you know when when did you have the click? Like when no, this is the thing that I'm gonna start doing for my life. Like you were in Finland already. How was that? Yeah, I I got divorced. I got divorced and then like that was a big click also and then the first apartment I got I kind of got kicked out because the landlord was selling the place mm. and so kind of like I didn't want to wait I was in a rush and I found this really great small apartment well, big apartment really out really out from Helsinki in Espoo right. and I took it and I was surrounded by forest and the life was great. Okay, living with a family with like eight, nine kids, that's insane. Like there's noise all the time, but mm -hmm. the transition for me happened where I had no idea what I was doing and I went fully into it. And then I slowly learned, but it came with challenges too because the mind is so used to be in the city. So, and then I think after a year of that, I got this amazing small cabin that I rented just next to it. And then I started to do a garden with only recycled materials. Nice. But, but I can tell you that even for me right now, the transition is not over because now I'm back in this city because I got kicked out of that place as well. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. So it, it there's a lot of back and forth, and it's very challenging. It's still very challenging for me. Very, mm -hmm. very challenging. Yeah, so I can imagine. If you're starting, it's great. The road ahead is awesome, but it's it's yeah. You just gotta keep going forward. Yeah, man. Like it's crazy. I, I I feel so limited. Like I can't do anything that I used to do when I was living in the forest. Almost. This is this is a complete complete different life i'm not yeah. really into it so much so that's why now i go to my piece of land and as every second weekend almost and i go there with mm -hmm. my partner and spend time there it's great oh okay so you got a site in 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 finland right yes so yeah, i bought i bought the piece of land yeah because i find it a bit difficult to have that decision like you have to go around and stay in a place. If you follow like the permaculture way, they you will would say like you have to stay one year in a place to observe everything, all the seasons, mm -hmm. the wind. I mean you do that or you got anxious uh, no I'm gonna buy straight away. I didn't get anxious. I wanted the piece of land to start to do that. And also how I want it is that I didn't want the piece of land that was amazing. I wanted the crappy one that no one wants because you can transform something ugly and like not useful into something amazing. You just need to use permaculture in the right way. So I bought a piece of land for 10,000 euro, 1.3 hectares. So 1.3 yeah, hectares, 1.3. Yeah. But that's the thing also like, Permaculture teaches us to to look for all the characteristic we want, but it doesn't work like that narrowly. Why why search for something you definitely dream and then you might get disappointed afterwards? I went for exactly what I didn't know I wanted, and I'm building what I want. I'm mm. transforming what I want with observation. And I did not do the observation for a year. I didn't go there for two years. I bought the piece of land three years ago and mm -hmm. I just went there from time to time, like maybe once every season to check how it looked like. Mm -hmm. And I decided that now, now I'm going to go and I'm just going to do, I'm not going to start thinking too much. I will just do a small, simple design, mm -hmm. chop some fucking trees. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And you, how often you go there now? every second week although now i'm going to canada in november to see my my family mm -hmm. and then after that uh it's gonna be again every second week even through the winter because actually in the winter is the best time to cut down trees mm -hmm. so so i should do that i i, I should i want to do that actually <laughs> yeah 
and I will be maybe jobless anyway, so I do have to spend my time uh, kind of productive in a sense. At least I do want. Right. Yeah. Nice, man. Let me see what I have more for you here. Yeah, uh, go for it. Uh, tell me about any project that you have you have already done or some 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 projects that you are still working well um i was volunteering at some uh, permaculture market garden mm. it's right. not my project but i was like giving my time to uh, the person responsible there that is now my, my a close friend of mine mm -hmm. and unfortunately he's stopping that market garden because of complications regarding the city where it is mm. Uh, but it was, it was great. I mean, it was just like what you expect of like everything grown on the spot, harvested, transformed and shipped locally. So that is a thing. It was called uh, Little Club Permaculture mm -hmm. before it was in Espo. Nice. And then, well, when I was living in Espo as well, I had this huge garden that I created with recycled natural material. I created like the my my uh, raised beds with hammering big sticks in the ground and uh, creating platforms towards the river. Uh, I call, I had even had a name for it. Like it was really a project that was registered on the Permaculture Association here. Cool. Um, trees, bushes. I think I had I had cherry trees and nut trees going on apple trees, um, I had uh, alive fences. So like so in, in, in this case, it's mostly willow that you would cut and put on the ground and it would grow. So it would grow permanently like a fence, like a mm, cross cross fire. Nice. So nice. I had that going on and chickens. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the projects that I had that I was involved with. And then, you know, mm. I visited some places to see mm. and help. I think I have a friend as well mm. in a city called Pautkane. He has a homestead, so I went there to help. And now I'm on my own piece of land, which I haven't oh. done. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And, and what I'm are... working... <laughs> and, sorry. Sorry. Just one more. No, no, go, and go I'm and I'm working for a landscaping gardening company that is trying to create a market garden on the side as well. So we're building garden beds and we're harvest. We have a lot of food. Mm -hmm. We had, we grew watermelon in Finland and tons of pumpkins and chilies and we had grapes as well in the greenhouse. So, oh. Yeah, we were. Yeah, Loads of fruits. Uh, yeah. So I have a. I'm still I'm active in mm -hmm. a way. Cool man. Never never stop like always doing like something here, something there. Yeah, cool. just remember to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> just remember to sleep. Yeah, yeah, but if you are enjoying yeah. the time that you are awake, it's fine. I do, I do. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to really like take it in. I'm outside. There's no better. There's no better to be. Yeah, man. There's something that I'm really worried when I buy my place is the neighbors. Well, mm -hmm. what you can tell me about the neighbors? How is your neighbors? Well, I have one neighbor on my piece of land that is there and it's a family and he has even a car garage. Mm. Uh, when I went there the first few times, my car battery died and the guy that knows him, uh, his friend, I think he was even like maybe his brother, saw me and say hey you okay i was like yeah my car battery he's like hey do you want that you just go see my friend there like he's your neighbor and he will come and charge your car and they came and charged my car cool. and, and well i'm in the forest man i'm on i'm like on a on, on a hill i'm on the middle level of a hill not at the bottom not the bottom like right. there mm -hmm. so i don't have that much neighbor it's like old farmlands so mm -hmm. i think a lot of things is abandoned like uh, my piece of land when i bought it no one has been there for 20 years at least no so it way was, yeah it was really like it's really wild though yeah 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 there's a lot of trees that i need to cut down because it grew like animals around 
Well, yeah, there is. There is. I mean, there are some wild dogs, which is kind of mm. funny. Like mm-hmm. the people leave their dogs outside. There's definitely some some bird and some deer but you don't see them so often, but you can hear the crack in the forest, you know, uh, passing. So yeah. And are you afraid to stay by yourself? Like, can no, you sleep? I've done, no, I've no. done it. And I've done it. Like I just slept in my car too. Like it's really easy. No problem. Eh? <laughs> no, no, no. And also like, I'm, mo- I'm not afraid of really animals. I'm more afraid of people. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> of course at first like it's dark yeah like i'm telling you it's there's no light there's no like street lamp there's just nothing the moon. so just the stars and the moon that's it <laughs> and because it's so much forest it's super dark but now oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, i kind of cleared a nice spot so mm-hmm. yeah. but there's a good thing to look at the stars yeah it's like wow it's massive yeah. like yeah, the universe yeah I, can't and wait to be able, I can't wait to have the hammocks and just like oh. chill in the <laughs> night eventually. I mean, next year for me is the big moment because I want to start to build my house. So, mm. Oh, that's a good a good topic. Let's talk about yeah. building houses. Do you want to? Because <laughs> I love that topic. Okay. Um, you're going to do it in a bioconstruction way, like a something with the woods or the, the yeah. use the earth? Uh, well, I, I have to uh, check most likely the all the soil because I've done some soil tests and most mm-hmm. of the soil that I have is a bit sand. I mm-hmm. don't know if I have clay, so making um, cob is going to be difficult if I don't have clay. I mean, yeah. I have farmers, so I can get all the hay, all the fibers almost for free. But if I don't have clay, it's going to be hard yeah but i have wood and I, there's a lot of stones around too there's a lot mm. of stones That's and nice. so i'm planning to do like a, some sort of elevated bio construction for sure using mm-hmm. a combination mm-hmm. of semi-modern design with old techniques right cool yeah but it's slow, man. I've never done this either. So it's, it's just been studying in my head so much, like searching mm-hmm. on. And my favorite, actually, my favorite research engine for, for this is Pinterest. Because some people actually share pictures of books you would never find and information. Mm. It's super cool. So nice. I'm just like, I'm on Pinterest and I have this huge folder for like Homestead. And I have all mm-hmm. my sections and so yeah, it's exciting. It's mm-hmm. exciting. Oh yeah. yeah, I can imagine. I, I mean, in the way that I do it as well, this is the most uh, challenging of ever. It's all by hand, huh? so I'm chopping the trees and I have to skin the trees. I have to prepare. Them oh, you're not and... gonna use the power though? No, I don't. Everything, even even the drill for the wood is a hand <laughs> drill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything. It's is gonna be funny hand. anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's. I told you I have time and no money. So I buy all used tools, all pre-used or people that don't want them and you sell for cheap. I, I, it's my, it's the, it's the, it's the choice that I took, but at the same time, it's the only choice that I, I don't want to have debt. I don't want to take a loan. I'm so not interested into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Th- there's a good few people that they are just doing is stuffs with no power always like uh, doing naturally you know mm-hmm. and instead of like uh, putting screws or they just make stuff to be uh, connected and yeah then and then you support. can have a hole and then a piece of wood inside yeah. everything is held by pressure yeah. and the church yeah. used to be built like that before like if you see mm-hmm. the old buildings they are the only ones who is still like up and if you see the, the others built by with the concrete and stuff like that, they have like a time limit, you know? They do. I mean, the <laughs> best example is to is to see the temples in Japan. That's a really good example of how to use wood. And if it's well taken care of, it can last forever. It can last oh, yeah. forever. So it's the just same main, thing. Maintenance. Just maintenance. <laughs> that's, that's not so easy that's a bit hard man but that's that's something to learn if you really want it i mean i i believe right now that's what i want so 
Nice, man. And there's something else that you want to tell me, some some news? Oh, well, you know, the plan is like regarding the construction, like I want to build my own pond. I want to have my own pond. I mean, I have a neighbor that has a pond that is not far that maybe I'll try to buy it, but mm. I want to be like a pond, a sauna. I mean, you can't of be with course, a sauna. Yeah. Here. <laughs> and uh, like, I'm going to also do, that's, that's a really cool idea that I've got. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build like a tower made out of live trees. So I'm basically just going to attach them at the top so they cross in a triangle and they would grow mm -hmm. in the reverse direction. I would put a platform where mm. they cross. So it's good. it would be like observation for the place and the surrounding, like a meditation as well. Like wow. at the top and chilling. I mean, I have some ideas and they're a bit crazy, but... Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> yeah, I have to climb the tree first and like try to fucking pull the things together with the rope. That's gonna be challenging. That's gonna mm -hmm. be challenging. Yeah, better call your friends. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any accommodation for anyone, so whoever Come I inside. know. <laughs> yeah they have to bring their tent man i only have one tent i can't provide for everybody like yeah. so yeah. I, oh yeah i need to build a kitchen also that's one thing that i need to figure out like an outdoor mm -hmm. kitchen and like a composting toilet oh yeah so, definitely yeah you know, and there's, well, there's a lot of small things to think about oh yeah there's something that i always think about it's about the water and mm, i have a pump i have a well oh you have it yeah, and, and I made a my, I made a microbial test, and right. it's clean. It Good. just smells bad because it's old. So I just need to kind of refresh the water, and it's ah uh, cool, man. So it's yeah. drinkable or not? Like it's drinkable, but it smells and tastes like rotten eggs, which is not bad. <laughs> it's just it's a bit Strange. smelly. Yeah, yeah, but I can fix it. I just need to 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 take time and do it. It's not. A short process but it's doable ah, without true. chemicals without yeah. chemicals. at least you know there's water coming maybe you can yeah. get dig and find it somewhere else i or... can at least use it for the plants for the garden for sure yeah. you don't have to go crazy about mm -hmm. like okay i don't have water my plants are gonna die mm -hmm. so that's good that's yeah. the most important thing yeah <laughs> yeah well, you're, you're not wrong. Like water is the one of the first most important thing, but like mm -hmm. water, shelter and fire. These are the three things you want to yeah. have when you move on your property. Like uh, mm -hmm. you cannot be without any of those preparing firewood in advance, building somehow, somehow a house. I mean, I'm going to go with a very small house first for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So, and then water. I mean, you can harvest water from rain as well, but that's really, that can be tricky. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not good for drinking as well. I People mean, you can filter it. Oh you yeah, can you can filter it. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if you're really uh, crafty, you can make this like, uh, you take like a Coke bottle or plastic bottle upside that you cut upside down and you fill it with like, uh, charcoal and sand and grass and you do layers and then you pass water through and it's going to be a oh, natural filter it's just like it's exactly like the carbon filter that you have at home it's just like the one from nature cool man nice yeah. <laughs> and do you like like a, the green rooftop what do you think about <sighs> I wish there would be. I wish there would freaking be a green rooftop everywhere imagine that Oh, so that easy. would be pretty. I, I would feel so much better in the city and not just green rooftop, like green walls. Like, why don't we have yeah, stuff growing one. always? Like, it's just like, I don't get it. Why it's so hard to convince the city. Like, there's so much benefits. Like, it's proven that there's so many benefits from it. Like, but hey, that's how it is. So. For yeah. my place, yes, there's going to be definitely green rooftop. I mean, even the type of house that I want to build is like this uh, triangle shape. It's called mm -hmm. the A-frame. And so right. the, the roof would touch the floor and I would like to make the stuff grow. In so the you're going to climb in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's for me, that's the best type of house because there's two walls and mm -hmm. it's the roof. You don't have to think about other things. Yeah. That, 
so it's easy to replace for me in my and, head. And if it's snowing, they don't get too much weight on the roof. No, yeah. because they help each other yeah. to hold. Like the pressure is good. Yeah, that's that. more smart. Yeah. 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 Nice man. Nice. Yeah, man. Please bring some green roof and green walls in the city. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. My Pinterest is full of pictures for that as oh, well. Oh man. man. Yeah. <laughs> My place, you don't see it, but like I have a, a growing light and my apple tree growing behind me. Oh, yeah. I see something there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a apple tree growing in my living room under the this, and my, my bathroom is full of plants and salt and like mm. lamps. Like I have chilies, figs, I have everything possible growing in there. Cool. Man. So you can still do it inside, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Did that, you feel that, like you want to start? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do like a, you can use the permaculture in your daily life, you know? Yeah, like, especially, especially yeah. that. Yeah. It, it's yeah. not the easiest to do because permaculture is, it's like the way it's been described or written, it's, it's more like for outside, like nature, although there is some new books that put more the social aspect into it. Mm hmm uh yeah. i mean there, there's one woman from uh, from england that uh, you could get the book i think it's a uh, luby mcmara it's called people in permaculture her book it's super good mm, Extremely check good. it out nice yeah yeah, yeah cool and cool. i heard you saying when you, we were together about you could divide the zones of permaculture in your house and then how yes. is that in do, are you doing this in your house right now or well yeah i mean i'm usually on my desk now so i have all my all my hobbies are like on the shelf next to me so i can reach and have my i have my bills i have my computer and i have that's the thing is like where do you pass most of time in what can you what is those zones like my bed is definitely like my zone one or two but i just sleep there i don't hang out there mm -hmm. but at the same time I kind of built an under spot here. Like I go meditate under my bed. So like ah. I, 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 I add some layers to my zone. Like I consolidate them mm -hmm. and my kitchen. Well, my kitchen is also maybe a zone two, but I do like my kitchen and my food, my preserves, my dehydrating, my tincture, my medicinal herb making is all there. So, you know, like you just have to, to figure out where you pass the most time and where you can put those things together regarding what you like in your life. Mm. The same thing with the garden. Like you will always have, let's say your chickens closer than your pigs. You will always have your herbs closer than your long-term vegetables. So it's, it's right. kind of, but it's not so easy because we're used to have like the house and then outside. So imagine an apartment, it's kind of, yeah, okay. It requires more effort, let's say. Yeah, I understand. It's like a, the guys, they are making like the tiny house. It's the same concept, right? Everything like really close, you know? Yes, yes. Yeah. And no, lo no, not losing space for nothing. Like everything mm -hmm. has an, a, 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 a purpose, place yeah. for a reason, for a purpose. Mm -hmm. I mean... Nowadays, you go in many apartments and houses and you have so much loss of space. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. <laughs> Tiny houses are, are a good example. Definitely. Yeah, it's the future. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. Well, we don't need so much. And having a house is much better than having an apartment. Yeah, and the house is really expensive, like to pay the rent and everything, you know. So mm -hmm, exactly. I think that's going to be the solution. Can I ask you a question? Of course. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So you want to start this transition and you are willing to go to the rural area, the countryside. Do yeah. you have any idea yourself what you want? Oh, yeah. I have kind of like, I don't know exactly where we are going to, but we want to stay in a place which is near to the... The, there's a, a forest in Brazil we call Atlantic uh, Forest, mm -hmm. and it's like a near to the sea, 
but it's also very like a massive forest, you know, a tropical forest. North? Northeast in Brazil. Oh, so it's... Uh... It's like a Bahia. Have you yeah, heard about Yeah, Bahia. Yeah, yeah. Bahia. Yeah, 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 yeah Bahia. Bahia. So that's okay. the main place that you... I think it's going to be the first place that you're going to visit to go around to see if you we feel good, you know. So going back to Brazil. Yeah, for a project in Brazil, you know. Okay, but, cool. Yeah, the really I mean, nice thing about Brazil is that there's many communities you can join as well. Exactly. That's what I, I think. was thinking. So, Did you know that also like there was this super cool concept coming from Brazil of like mixing capoeira and permaculture? Oh, really? I never heard that. Yeah, perma perma capoeira or something perma like capoeira. that. You go there to do cap <laughs> yeah, you go to do capoeira and then you do permaculture at the same time. You go together in the food forest and it looks super cool, those places. Oh, man. I never you heard learn about that. I must have check a look. it out. Yeah, have <laughs> a look. Have a look. I mean, it's been a while for me and, well... Plans are changing, but that that would be amazing to visit. Oh yeah, Shit. yeah. So, man, that's a, that's really good that you want yeah. to do this uh, like this learning curve mm -hmm. first because I think yeah. a lot of people just do theory, mm -hmm. theory learning, and don't go into the practical, and yeah. that stops. Like you, you yeah. get scared of the practical. So it's good that you end up doing it. It's gonna yeah. be super useful. Totally, man. And we are thinking to make like um, two tiny houses where one we can live and the other one we can rent for visitors, you know, and we can mm -hmm. do like a tourist, eco tourist, like walk into the forest. We can like uh, teach like a uh, basics of gardening or everything that we do in, in the place we can kind of teach, you know, bring the kids from the school there, you know, do kind of uh, some games, you know, to interact with the kids. Wow. I think wow, there, there's so, a, yeah, so many good things. ideas. Yeah. Like Vivian, my partner, she's a studying to be a teacher now. And oh, yeah. And she's going to be like a Portuguese and English teacher. And we are, uh, I'm kind of, I'm doing like a, a post graduation in arts. So we, which I can kind of teach as well in that way. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you heard about Waldorf. Have you heard it? The, the school Waldorf. No, I, I haven't. My I, no. It's like uh, in the same concept of permaculture, you know, they teach the kids like a, a, in a natural way, in their own time, you know, oh, they choose what they want We have something to... here called, yeah, we have something here called Steiner. Which oh, is that, kind that, of that's the one, that's the guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Rudolf Steiner. Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah, created yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, we have a few schools here in Finland, and they yeah. they sound freaking. I wish as a kid I would have been there. Shit, yeah, man. I would have had the blast of my life. Yeah, I think That's I would be cool. more smart if I yeah. was. <laughs> I mean, I I was starting to think the same thing as well. Like, I would like to have like many small houses. I mean, I'm gonna start with one, but I'm gonna build many many small houses, uh -huh. and people come, let's say, temporary, semi permanent yeah. lease. And I would love to have kids from the surrounding to learn about everything and have some yeah. like festival, small festival, and like yeah. some small workshop, very mm -hmm. local and very like respectful of everybody's. Of name. course, yeah. Cool, yeah, but there's it's some... awesome to hear that you want the same thing. I really yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's yeah, sweet. it's kind of like a a group of people is kind of thinking the same things like the same wave maybe yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. i mean there there there's a lot of awakening in our age group so yeah